So welcome back. Uh, we're into module three, the last of our modules. And this is the core module for us. And we're gonna break it down into uh, two, two segments. Um, one is unpacking the Article 6, and then secondly, um, of the Paris Agreement, and then secondly, how to operationalize Article 6 in the African uh, context. Um, unpacking because I think we, we need to have a common understanding of what Article 6 of the Paris Agreement is saying. So with your permission, then we'll continue. Um, first of all, first perhaps we should uh, have and agree on some definitions under the Paris Agreement. One is decarbonization. Uh, decarbonization is a, is a reduction of carbon, uh, is the conversion to an economic system that sustainably reduces or compensates uh, the uh, emissions of carbon dioxide. It's important that we must understand that concept and that definition because it is the one that allows us to operationalize Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. And all of these are, for example, uh, examples of how we can decarbonize. For example, we can decarbonize the production of electricity. We can um, switch to cleaner fuels. We can uh, re increase reliance on clean electricity. Uh, we can improve efficiency, reduce waste, uh, preserve natural carbon six, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Th those are things that we can do to decarbonize. Now, decarbonization is important because it is a goal under the G greenhouse gas uh, mitigation. Uh, the IPCC, the Impotent Governmental Panel on Climate Change, argues that there are, excuse me, there are multiple pathways to decarbonization, including uh, uh, carbon capture, use, and storage. So decarbonization is not just one approach. There are several ways to, uh, to attain decarbonization, but it is a global goal for, for greenhouse gas mitigation. So in unpacking Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, let us agree, understand that this is one of the key outcomes of the COP26, last year's COP, 2021 COP. Uh, and what uh, Glasgow did in 2021 was approve Article 6 sometimes called the Paris Agreement rule book governing carbon markets. Remember, in the history that we gave at module one on the Kyoto Protocol, we had one of the mechanisms under the Kyoto Protocol, the CDM, Clean Development Mechanism, which was established under the Kyoto Protocol but it only remained uh, operational up to 2020. So Article 6 of the Paris Agreement provides for a continuation for a transitional period after the 2020. So you can imagine if you had any carbon credits or whatever that was done at a recognition of or, or projects that were running under the Kyoto Protocol, they would come to an end at 2020. So Article 6, what it does is it provides for the continuation of the period when the Kyoto Protocol ends. So for example, it will recognize, the Article 6 will recognize that there will be certain activities that come out of the Kyoto, Kyoto Protocol as mitigation outcomes that will need to be transferred into the period post 2020 uh, under the Paris Agreement. 
Therefore, Article 6 is a framework for a mechanism that must continue where the clean development mechanism of the Kyoto Protocol left off. Um, and it assumes that if countries take full advantage of these credits towards NDC, uh, 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 achieving NDCs, then we can have the world achieving the Paris Agreement goals of net zero um, and uh, 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 improved resilience. So to, there's a need to be uh, to ensure that the Article Six, as we implement it, we make it fit for Paris. That, that is to say, we we must make sure that it it allows us to attain the goals of the Paris Agreement. And remember, the Paris Agreement was saying, "Hey, uh, we're going to do it better than the Kyoto Protocol." Kyoto Protocol was just saying, oh, in the, uh, uh, developed countries must reduce. Paris Agreement is saying all countries must reduce, including Africa, African countries. Now, as African countries, uh, therefore, we are now, because we've signed the Paris Agreement, all of us, we are now legally bound by the Paris Agreement. And therefore, what Article 6 does of the Paris Agreement is it establishes a carbon market where a country will be able to transfer carbon credits and from the reduction of greenhouse gases to help the other country meet its climate uh, uh, target. And most of these climate targets would be written and expressed and, and your nationally determined contribution, your NDC. So go and look, look at your country NDC. Most of these country NDCs are already uploaded on the UNFCCC website. Even if you don't know about it, you know, just go to tap two, 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 two keywords, NDC and your country name and you'll get the document or one or more, including the latest uh, nationally development contribution. Inside that NDC, you will find uh, um, a statement that says, country A will reduce by so much percent by 2025, et cetera, et cetera. So, you can use the carbon market under Article 6 of the Paris Agreement to attain that target that is espoused in the NDC of your country. And what Article 6 recognizes is that carbon markets are very important. It's an important tool. It's not the only tool, but it's a very important tool. And that carbon markets can incentivize climate action. And that the problem of course with carbon markets is that they'll have a timeline. So if say the Paris Agreement is up to, has, has the goal net zero by 2050, that means whatever you're doing at 2050, it will expire. If you haven't attained it, you'll be marked and you'll be told, oh, uh, you're a bad country or a good country or whatever it is. But over time, markets are expected to become redundant as every country gets to net zero emissions. So uh, we're expecting that the carbon market will die naturally because there'll be, there'll be, if we get to net zero emissions, if no one is emitting, then there will be no market for you to sell emissions because no one will be emitting. Everybody will be clean. So the Article 6 has three operative paragraphs. 
Two of these relate to the carbon market. It is 6.2, Article 6.2. It says we must have an, a, an, a framework for international cooperation. So you need to start getting yourself to negotiate on how this framework is going to work. How you're going to cooperate. If you're going to take part in the carbon market as a country in Africa, do you have, do you have the, are, are you able to take part in this cooperation? Are you ready? Article 6.4 establishes a central United Nations mechanism to trade credit. So for example, if a country A could pay for country B to build a wind farm instead of coal plant, emissions are reduced. Country B benefits from clean energy and country A gets the credit for reductions. So as an African country, you've got to understand that Article 6.4 expects you to take part in this mechanism to trade cred carbon credit. Now, what Article 6.2 and 6.4 therefore doesn't, we'll talk about this institutional, as you, you, you need to implement Article 6. You're going to need lots of people who understand. You're going to need private sector in your country. Your, 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 your stock exchange, your banking system has to start understanding this carbon market system because this is money in other words. These projects, this is financing, this is uh, resources that are moving from one country to the other. And of course, if, it, if they are resources, then they need tracking, they need all of these institutional arrangements and we'll talk more about these. But you can see that these two articles that talk to the carbon markets there for 6.2 and 6.4, um, in my view, are saying to Africa, hey, wake up, wake up, ding, ding, if it's, a, if it's a bell at school, then the bell is ringing, wake up. Article 6.8, establish a work program for non-market approaches. So for example, you may start getting non-market approaches applied to Africa. And again, you've got to start thinking, what could be these non-market approaches? This could be taxes to discourage emissions. So imagine a country in Africa that is wholly relying on tourism. But these tourists come from uh, country A that is very far away. So the tourists have to fly to your country. And as they fly, they are going to emit, their transport is going to emit, your hotel is going to emit, the air is going to emit, well, that activity is going to emit, game drive is going to emit. So you may have your own country apply, having non-market approaches applied to it, in essence, therefore, having taxation applied to your developmental objectives. So again, you've got to understand that how are you going to uh, take part in this work program and how, how are you going to get the readiness to take part in the work program for non-market approaches under Article 6.8 of the Paris Agreement. So these three operative paragraphs for Africa, 6.2, 6.4, and 6.8, are very crucial in, 
and pecking Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. I've given you the total Paris Agreement uh, 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 text uh, as, uh, as part of the handout uh, and attached to this lecture, to this module, and therefore please familiarize yourself with that. But I'm also giving you the neutral and the negative issues about Article 6. Um, and we will talk more about this over the next two days. Because as you, the most, the people who are going to have to trade in the carbon market are those people who have lots of carbon to, to trade. And who are these? These inherently are those large emitters. So for you, it is important that the value of the traded commodity, that traded um, uh, uh, the, the, the carbon is not diminished by double counting. So you will have to go into the negotiations of internationally transferred mitigation outcomes to make sure that the metrics, the accounting systems do not result in double, double counting and therefore minimized value. What I'm trying to say is supposing country A um, uh, gave you the, the, the technology, the wind farm, and they came to you and told you, oh, but you'll need lots of carbon credit to get this wind farm, simply because the value of the carbon credit has now fallen as a result of carbon double counting, then it is not fair on you because it means you have to have more land or more, more offset of carbon. In you. you have to do more to get the same little amount of, uh, of a wind farm. So these things are very critical for you that as you negotiate Article 6.2, you must make sure that there's no double counting in the ITMOS, in the internationally transferred uh, mitigation outcomes. The other thing is that um, right now, there's no levy on each ITMO to support climate change adaptation. Under CDM, we had a levy. We had negotiated to say every carbon credit under CDM, for every CDM, we would have 2% going for climate change adaptation. As Africa, well, it was a very powerful statement for our negotiations. Why? Because we said we are very clean. Our emissions are about 4% of the global. So there's very little mitigation we're doing, we can do because we are not emitting that much because we globally, we, there's only 4%. It's only very small. What we're our major problem is climate change adaptation, addressing the vulnerabilities and impacts of climate change. And therefore, we need to focus on adaptation. This has been the strongest argument for Africa that, hey, well, um, emissions are very small, but our, the, the need for us to adapt to climate change is very huge because of impacts of flooding, droughts, whatever. Winds, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, if we can get some levy on the mitigation outcomes in the on each of the 
it was like we did on the CDM, maybe that could up the amount of resources available for adaptation, which we so much need in Africa. Now, Kyoto Protocol, we were doing 2%. The key question is, do we still want to negotiate for 2%, 1%, 5%? And remember, you don't just go to the negotiations with a number. You must say what your interest is. So go and read, go and calculate, go and think about what the 2% means, what 4% means. What is the desirable, what is the impact of true on your economies, on this, on et cetera. So you don't just go, because remember, the other guy's interest on the ITMO will be to maximize profit. So you want to optimize adaptation benefit. That's your interest. So you need to go and negotiate on this negative and positive aspects of Article 6.2. The other thing is that uh, The, there is also a talk about nature-based nature -based, based temporary emission removal projects. Um, they will be temporary. They won't lead to permanent emission removals. So the key issue is go and understand what 6.2 and 6.4 mean for Africa. Now, there is, there is a lot of things that we can, benefits that we can achieve from a nature-based approach. And we'll talk about this in a while, but go ahead and find out whether we want to make them temporary or permanent emission removal projects. And how, how permanent and what's in it for you. Because remember, if you're going to tie down your forest for uh, 50 years to your project, then it means you can't do any other thing on that land. And we have lots and lots of experiences from Red Plus under the Kyoto Protocol. So please go and find out on this and we'll discuss these further on that. But there are positives. For example, um, uh, baselines that were used to determine the number of projects uh, can issue that 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 argument looks like it's already agreed and accepted. Although we need to set a look at it, and we'll look at it in much more detail when we come to the negotiations. But for example, it, it's important that as you create your baseline, most of your NDC, for example, will give a base year to say, I will reduce so much by this much based on a baseline. 1990 or 2000 or 2010 or whatever. Now, the key question I have is, are those baselines used, are the baselines that, you, that are used helping Africa achieve sustainable development objectives, which are, which are the objectives of the, the climate change objectives convention under article two of the convention. So we need to go back and sit down and interrogate each of the articles 6.2, 6.4, also 6.8 um, and say, what's in it for Africa? I've given you the positives, the neutral and the negatives. And uh, this is the basis on which 
as we unpack um, Article 6, we'll have to practice and identify what is it that we're going to negotiate at COP27. Article 6.4, for example, says there will be, um, if people, NGOs, communities that are affected by projects, carbon market project, uh, they will be, they will have an organization an independent body, which will oversee the uh, grievances. So that's positive, but um, how do we want to manage this process? Is it going to be, is, is this independent body going to start being the ch chief whip for Africa? Is it, uh, is, is it, how do we operationalize this? in an African government perspective. Remember, we have some experiences from Red Plus, reducing emissions uh, through uh, avoided deforestation and land degradation. But th those projects taught us so much that sometimes you're implementing a project and then you have an external force that flags grievances that you don't know about as an African government. Now, the key issue is when we operationalize 6.4, how do we make sure that, okay, the positives and the negatives and the neutrals about these articles um, uh, work for us? They don't harm our global goal, which is sustainable development. Now, let's remember that Article 6 is linked to the Paris Agreement net zero goal and the climate resilience goal. How is this? The Article 4.1 of the Paris Agreement says, parties aim to reach global peaking of greenhouse gas as soon as possible recognizing that picking will take longer for developing country parties and to undertake rapid reductions thereafter in accordance with the best available science so that to so as to achieve a balance between anthropogenic emissions by sources and removals by sink of gases in the second half of the century so there you are Article 4, paragraph 1 says we must go for a goal, um, net zero emissions in the second half of this century. That's what science is telling us. And it is also recognizing that developing countries will peak long later. So you remember that graph that I'm showing you where the, the industrial countries have to reduce very fast and the developing countries have to pick a little bit and then reduce also. Use Article 4.1 to unpack it as you argue your case for picking later. But of course, remember, you want to make sure that you attain climate resilience as well. And we'll look at this in the next slide. The concept of net zero carbon emissions is based on science. But when you operationalize it, you are going to operationalize it through social, political, and economic systems. It will, it will, 
it's going to be people who operationalize it. It is going to impact on our economies. And therefore, as we operationalize Article 6, let us try and make sure that we, we minimize the negative impact on our economic systems. So it is important that as we achieve the Paris Agreement of net zero and climate resilience goals, the market mechanisms must be designed to help countries to achieve by 2050 and simultaneously contribute to meeting the sustainable development goals. That is why there's been a call that, that we must see transformations. Transformations are huge ch changes. Uh, they are uh, robust changes, fundamental, uh, sustained change of a system that ends the high carbon practices and contributes to uh, um, the Paris Agreement of um, on adaptation and limiting global warming to 1.5 and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So we can see that these market systems need to be designed such that, and it is up to us as African countries, they need to be designed in such a way that it will help countries to achieve these goals of the Paris Agreement. And these goals are saying, um, when we operationalize them, these carbon market systems, they will be, they will impact on our societies, on our polities, on our economic systems. And therefore, it, it calls on us to make sure that as we operationalize them, they, they must simultaneously contribute to meeting the sustainable development goals. Science is telling us that current carbon flows to and from the atmosphere are not in equilibrium, that the emissions from fossil fuels and land use change far exceed the removal of carbon. And therefore, as a transformation, Net zero will require anthropogenic flows to balance. We need a radical reduction in fossil fuel and land use related carbon emissions. But remember, Africa's contribution to this is very small. It's 4%. Don't let that fact escape from you. Because when you go to negotiate, they will tell you deforestation is taking place in Africa. You're burning, but your emissions are 4%. That's what science is telling us. That's what carbon accounting is telling. In fact, the emissions in Europe and then in other one or two countries in one little state or, 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 or region in Europe or wherever else, might be equal to all of the emissions from Sub-Sahara Africa. So be careful when you use the science, use the numbers, use the information, go and read as you prepare, as you prepare for your negotiations. Now, there is also um, a, a, an introduction of the biological storage and also a uh, geological storage. This is, uh, uh, you know, um, carbon capture and storage, use and storage. Um, these are the technologies that are being thought of uh, uh, in, in, in an attempt to make sure that we have a radical reduction in a carbon emission. So 
the thinking is that we will get some of the carbon dioxide from our, our sources and put it into some geological formation down into the ground. Uh, but then um, uh, we don't know whether that uh, whether the technologies are uh, some of these things we need to talk about. But it is also important that we align finance flows with the net zero emission pathways. So the, as Africa, I, I think we must continue to say we should align the amount of resources available, including technology, including finance, because these will help us radically change from fossil, based, fossil fuel based emissions. So for example, what we see now is a global movement towards, move, towards uh, um, EMVs, electric motor vehicles. Oh, that's a huge movement by all the major car companies, motor industries. But you can imagine that in Africa, it might take us a little longer because we don't have the infrastructure. So we need to ensure that we align those resource flows with the net zero emission pathways. Otherwise, we can't translate these mitigation commitments into concrete actions. And therefore we need to, as we unpack and operationalize Article 6, be realistic in understanding what it means for Africa. Are we ready? Do we have the capacities? is the principle of common but differentiated and respective capacities. Do we have the capacity? Are we able to apply these basic principles and other principles under the convention? Now let's turn to linking Article 6 with the Paris Agreement. We're unpacking Article 6 we linked it to the Paris Agreement goal of net zero and also of climate resilience. Now let's link it to nature-based solutions. This idea of using carbon markets for nature-based solutions is not new. Um, COP 13 in Bali in 2007 uh, promoted the carbon market and the forest systems, uh, especially the reducing emissions from um, deforestation and land degradation. And Red, what was called Red Plus, established forest monitoring systems, governance reforms, strategies for reducing, etc. And I, I'm, I'm calling upon Africa as we negotiate here, please let's go and learn what we, let's bring up what we learned under Red Plus to Article 6. Because that historical, uh, that, that, uh, that, those lessons learned under Red Plus will be very useful as we come to link Article 6 of the Paris Agreement to nature-based solutions. Remember, nature-based solutions, red, 
implemented pro correctly can provide additional benefits in terms of biodiversity, rural livelihoods, and climate change uh, uh, adaptation. But we need to do it correctly. And those lessons from Red Plus are very critical. Remember, some of the lessons from Red Plus include uh, concern about leakage, that you are conserving a forest, you're looking after the forest, but elsewhere, because people don't have access to that forest, they go and cut trees elsewhere. So ultimately, you haven't, uh, uh, you know, solved the problem because you you must make sure that those activities that generate emissions are not simply shifted elsewhere. There's also the risk of permanence that uh, sometimes you change a government and then the policies change and then the uh, um, the whole thing is thrown up into the air. Sometimes there's a concern of additionality that um, that uh, these emissions are not real, uh, they would have happened anyway, and therefore we need to prove additionality that these projects, without these projects, um, it was going to get worse, and 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 we can learn a lot from the past under Red Plus. The accuracy of measurement um, is also very important in here that we need to develop the tools for measuring market systems as they apply to nature-based solutions under Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. Finally, uncertainty, social safeguards, and double counting. We've talked about these three things um, in the past as risks to um, carbon markets in, 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 in general under Article 6.2 and Article 6.4, but also applying to nature-based solutions. Now let's turn to operat operationalization of um, Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement, unlike the Kyoto Protocol, has a stronger transparency and accountability system in that this time all countries are in it number one number two it is you the country now who is responsible to monitor and account for the for your commitment this is very important because now it means you now have to report on your on your your your, your ability to mitigate to reach the NDC target, and that also remember this new Article Six is legally binding and applies to all countries, not just developed countries. And that you must report on your progress every two years. Oh, that's a lot of work. A lot. If you know how, that it takes a lot of uh, uh, effort just to produce a, a country report uh, and having to report every two years is going to be a, a huge task and that these technical reports at the national level will be subjected to an independent technical expert review so somebody else is going to review your national report and say, are you first telling the truth? 
have you done uh, are you attaining your your uh, your ndc target now it is important therefore that we need to set up certain functions in africa we need policy coordination and oversight um, agreeing on the programs, agreeing on the allocation of functions to other um, uh, institutions within your country. You need to come up with this, the uh, rules and guidance for program implementation, uh, grievances, appeals by, for example, civil society in your country. You need to have a technical group that will oversee the development of new methodologies, technical guidance, guidelines, uh, and providing analysis of impact of, of, of these projects on, on, and, and, and on NDC. And on the implementation, uh, or generally, um, auditing, verification, approval, uh, registration of projects, certification, uh, transfer, um, etc. Et so that, that there's a lot of things that um, you will need to do as an African country to make sure that you can operationalize Article 6. The big question is, are you ready? Do you have the means of implementation of your operationalization strategy? Or do you need to be helped? Maybe you need training because you need, like we said, you, you, when you, you, you're going to take part in this climate change convention negotiations and, and everything. You need special skills because carbon credits themselves are special. Uh, uh, bonds, uh, tradable bonds, and they are, and a lot of our finance and um, other guys uh, in the finance maybe need to be um, to be taught and, uh, and 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 brought in into the into the discussion about carbon markets. Now the transformational changes that were necessary for example we need to make sure that we have a transformational change to mitigate the negative impact so we need to start thinking about how do we ensure we are, are practicing that sweet spot between mitigation adaptation and development and as assessing and rewarding benefits for transformational change and aligning monitoring uh, reporting and verification of ndcs and sustainable development goals accounting and reporting and the institutional capacity that we will need and market differentiation uh, there will be a lot of people who will be voluntary, uh, who want to volunteer, willing to pay, for example, people who uh, want to uh, just come and buy a um, carbon credit. How do you differentiate that market sense from the project market sense? Because, and these are the transformational changes that we will need to attain a net zero goal, Paris Agreement goal, as we implement, as we operationalize Article 6 towards a, a net zero emissions by 2050. 2050 is only 28 years ago. So, and time is ticking all the time. Now, currently, um, the, there is a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of transparency and common time frames. Um, we also need to revisit and strengthen the NDCs um, 
and also how, how we face down uh, the coal use and face out inefficient for fossil fuel subsidies. So as we go into the negotiations in, in, in Cairo, in, in, in Sharm El Sheikh, um, I think it is in, in Egypt at COP27, uh, let's familiarize ourselves with the status of negotiations. This I took from uh, the subsidiary bodies meeting in May, June this year. There's still a lot that is under negotiations. Uh, like the rule goes, um, it, it is not agreed until everything is agreed. So let's go there and make an impact on negotiations on Article 6 of the... And then the next um, um, step is we will start taking some um, group work on how to develop intervention statements. So I'll give you a, a real negotiation text and we will try and see how we can come up with and taking on just one thing at a time. Um, for example, we could take uh, um, uh, the global goal is the statement helping us attain the global goal. Is the statement helping us attain the climate resilience goal, et cetera, et cetera. But we will unpack this further uh, as we go into the group work and give you the the information as we move forward. I, I'll stop here and take any questions. But like I said, we're going to unpack this um, um, just for your information, Jan. We're going to unpack this into three little sessions. Unpacking, um, li linking um, Article 6 to uh, the other core goals and then operationalizing um, of Article 6. Thank you.